What's up guys, Flo Shizzle here, and today we're going to be VOD reviewing My Little Sister. So this is actually quite a high ranked VOD review. She's immortal, and in this VOD she's playing Sky on the map Fractured. The thing that she said she wanted to work on the most, or she feels like she has the most struggle with, is ranked anxiety. And I think that everyone at some point encounters this problem, but everyone has their own methods of fixing it. So throughout the VOD I'm gonna find points where she exhibits ranked anxiety, and give sort of tips on how to fix it. Without further ado, let's hop into the video. Yo, do you buy full armor when you uh you don't get touched with like armor on pistol? So this is actually a very common question a lot of people ask. Future flow here. So basically I realized in editing that I didn't explain this concept very well, so I'm gonna explain it here. Your answer will really depend on how many credits you have and what weapon will you buy. If you're able to get like a vandal or a phantom, then it's okay to just keep your light armor and your 25 shields, because you're likely gonna be able to close the gap with the fact that you can one hit headshot. This will also have the benefit of being better translated into future rounds. Now, if you don't have enough and you are forced to buy a bulldog or a guardian, at best, maybe at that point, it's not worth to spend the extra because those guns aren't going to carry as well as a phantom or vandal. And therefore, buying better shields and then keeping a specter will probably be good enough. That's my own personal opinion. Take that as you will. This is like a really bad buy from the entire team perspective. I get it. If you like have like a sheriff, maybe two is a little stretching it, to be honest. But you have one specter. And we have a sh two sheriffs, a ghost, and I hope this jet buys. We don't even know yet. But essentially, if you think about it, the idea is that the enemy could buy better guns than your entire team right now, which is kind of scuffed, considering that you won pistol. Okay, so we did end up upgrading to Spectre, so this is great. Ooh. I don't really think there's really a need to be so aggressive here. You guys have better guns. Um, jump spotting would have been probably fine, and just shifting the rotates. I don't think you really gain that much, as well as the fact that you do have utility to even just check if someone's in this area. Flashing around here would have been perfectly fine. Tells if someone's there, and that way you're mentally ready to engage in a fight. And this helps with ranked anxiety, because ranked anxiety is the fact that you are always playing off of, like, no information. A lot of it comes from that, that you feel like trapped and that you feel lost in essence. But if you always know that, hey, someone's here and therefore your mind engages in the fact that, oh, someone's here, I'm going to physically zone in a little bit. It's the same idea of like, if I tell you this chamber is going to swing versus not telling you. If I tell you that you're going to swing, the likeliness of you getting that kill are just so much higher. Even though in both instances, the chamber does the same swing. It's not about the type of swing, it's about you just knowing. So they end up losing the second round. I think that was on a little bit of part due to just playing too aggressive and losing that first initial pick. And then on also the fact that I think like three people didn't have a gun. So on an eco round, this is a little bit better. And actually I like the fact that she doesn't flash here. Uh, flashing gives the enemy like knowledge that you're in the area. And getting aggressive on these eco rounds are is good. You have nothing really to lose. You have a pistol, right? Um, chances are in a straight up gunfight, you just lose. So getting an early flank might be a way to even out the gun disadvantage, catching someone off guard. Right. Uh, I think you should have a gun out. Oh, you should run it, run it, run it, run it. Oh, uh, so. Paying attention to the minimap, you'll see that the chamber is already fighting the jet. And since chamber was the one you saw in tunnel, then that means that likely that guy has fallen back, is no longer holding you. So therefore, your walking doesn't really do much. Oh, nice shot. Oh, oh, nice try, nice try. That was a nice try. That was actually really winnable. <laughs> so I'm going to say that they have a lot of spaces on the attack side. They're not running like a full default. I bet you that a lot of these rounds, there's no one dish. And that you're wasting a lot of your time being dish. And that had you, like, especially this round, she has two flashes. I'm going to look that, I hope that she uses one of her flashes for info here. Oh, there's someone here. This is gonna be a hard kill. Nice. That's huge. Okay. I don't think that someone else was there because if they were there, um, they would have probably followed up the raise, but there was nothing. So it's a 3v3. This is hella winnable. Oh. That is not as deep as I wanted. Okay, you guys want to fight for this gun. So this gun that they killed in A main, 
Yeah, yeah this is up. this is. Oh, they took the gun. All right. Oh, there's one. I think that was a time when you flash. So there, there, it's like you were trying to fight for the gun. You flash deep to see if anyone's still holding for the gun. If it is, then you guys kind of know you guys can crunch on it. I think that was also not a bad time to pop ult. I think the hesitation is what got you there. I think always trying to seek maximum value for all your utility isn't always the way to go. I think that a lot of people will like, they have sky ult, they're like, oh, I'll wait till I get closer to B to do it. But in reality, there's a lot of benefit here. If you ult, one, if we think about it, you would have caught that jet off guard. Very likely. You guys get that kill. It's a 3v2. Now all three of you guys have guns because you get the gun from the jet as well as the gun that is down. This is obviously in hindsight, but stop always thinking about, oh, let's try to get the maximum amount of value by getting closer. Just pop it because there's already a lot of value that's gained here. Now, if you were on a flank on your own uh, and there wouldn't be that much value and I could understand not wanting to pop it then. But this, this, this case, you guys are all three here. Go for the gun work together and you guys might catch someone off it's also going to chase all the way to b you have a clear b line to just like pull out your knife and run all the way to b main knowing that you won't have to check every single corner all right so there's the early flash i would jump spot this oh that's that's good you, you should definitely try to kill this raise definitely try to kill this raise dog dog for your teammate all right it's fine Raze ended up staying there. The thing is, you guys both lost line of sight. Like, the moment you fell back because of the nade, you no longer had line of sight here. Okay, so you caught the Raze off guard. You know that Raze is one. Now you, you guys both have absolutely no idea. The Raze could have ran at this point. And then you definitely should have dogged because you know that if you clear all of this, your teammate will just pick it up. And then Raze will probably be caught out on the open once the dog clears it. Pop ult something. One in. Uh, I was I was like, this, it's the hesitation. I could see a lot of hesitation right now. This is this is a very common thing from ranked anxiety, where it's just like you're so scared of losing gunfights and you're like kind of indecisive about the things you want to do. You pop ult there. The point of popping ult there, by the way, isn't to get info. You already know that they're probably a main. The idea is that you got ulted from breach and your site player also got ulted. If you pop your ult, they can't just beeline it for the breach. They have to stall. They break the ult. Maybe your breach stays alive on site. You could have also dogged there. The time you probably should have dogged is right here. When you get into this corner, because there's nothing you can do. You don't, obviously, I you don't want to really just re-peek because you'll probably die. The jet's probably just holding it. If you dog here, stalls the A main push, and you guys probably have a solid chance of winning main on site. I think this is a good time to ult as well. Yep. Nice. Stunned again. Nice. Stay. You want to stay tower. Oh, nice try. Nice try. That is... Default, default, default. Nice. Okay, it was a good round. It was a good recovery. The old timing was good. Uh, staying tower is good. There's not really a reason to drop down there. Alright, that's good. Yep. Big info. No need to no need to walk here. No need to walk here. There's absolutely like yeah, he could be hiding behind the little bricks, but I think it's a, worth it to take the risk. So you want to the reason why you want to start speeding it up is because your jet gets picked immediately. This flash tells you unless this guy is ratting in one of these corners. I mean, if they do, unlucky. Uh, but your jet dies. Now you continue walking. Like if we're gonna actually guess, by the time your chamber dies. If you had you decided to run it, you could have been like up here. So it's it's like doesn't seem like that big of a difference because we're only talking about like four or five seconds here. But four to five seconds can cover a lot of distances, especially if you have a knife out. And then now we've lost two players. It's a little bit too late. If you were up here, you might have gotten an early flank catch off a player. But we're going to keep playing out the round. Yeah, this is this is looking like a really scuffed round. There's nothing much you can really do about it. It's a little bit too late. Nice shot. There's a raise close. Nice. Uh, one in the back side, one in this corner. 
he pushes that. But yeah, I definitely think that there, you want to be put yourself in playmaking positions. You lost a pick, you're 4v5. Look for ways to get back into the round and even the odds. If that's through an early flank, then do it. Like, it was a lot of information that you already had there. They're not outside of dish. They're likely not even in the spawn side. There's a kill B main, so there's two. Therefore, it looks like it's a B hit. If you guys have reached this part in the video, welcome to the secret society where only cool people live. I super appreciate you watching this far, so leave a comment below. I'd love to talk to you guys down in the comments. My goal is to create super in-depth content that helps people improve beyond the very basic general understanding. Creating guides that not only teach the simple stuff, but also how to think for yourself. If you're into that, hit the like button and subscribe so that you can get the most up-to-date notifications on when my video comes out. As a heads up, I also do coaching on Metify, so if you're also interested in that, Links will be down in the description, but without further ado, let's move back into the video. I like that she's not peeking right now. You kind of don't want to catch them on the initial peek. You want to catch them when they're running out. So by tucking and peeking occasionally, you hopefully catch them when they've like looked away. They already cleared the hard left and they're looking toward the right. This is a 4v2. You don't have to do much. You really don't have to do that much. Yeah, okay. This is good. Nice. See there, yeah, this is a backup. Yep, this is a good call. Do you think this works? It does not work. <laughs> That's just something, it did not work. I should still be. Oh. This raise is gonna ult. Oh no. One sand. I think you ignore this. I think you sit in the ult there. Okay, we got the kill. I think it's an ult. You pop ult here. Pop ult. Your teammate needs help. There you go. It's a little late, but we'll take it. Oh, your viper's popping off. Oh, this is awkward. Nice. Oh my god. Okay, the Viper popped off, and that's kind of why they're running around, but definitely pop ult earlier. If Viper dies here, you, you guys lose. That's it. It's gonna be a four on two retake. But even if, like, let's say Chamber or you die, as long as Viper still anchors, this round is still kind of winnable within her ult. So the, definitely the priority is to keep her alive. You can dog something here. Because you guys have very little info. You already rotated off A. So you want to confirm that whether you need to stay here or leave. Because right now Viper is alone, right? If you dog through Arcade, you'll probably feel a lot more comfortable just leaving. You already have three players here. Breach is already deciding to re rotate. And that's hesitation right here. Yeah, use your utility here. Find Get the info that you need. Dog through. You can check like as deep as like here. And then that way you'll know that it's like, oh, they're not under, they're not like in this area, they're probably not going through arcade. It's either just a straight up B main hit, which in th that case kind of sucks. Yeah, I'm starting to feel like it's like they made noise B and they're starting to go toward A. I'm grabbing a, a good off angle. You have so much util here. Ideally, your sky flash should always be on cooldown. Because that means you can get as much information as possible. You have a second one that you can always use. It's when you have two, sorry. When you have two, ideally, first one should always, almost always be on cooldown. All right, here we go. Yeah, that's a good indication to leave. Yep. I think it should, could have been done a long time ago, though. The thing is, like, if we start from the timing where I said you should have dogged, you would have been on site, like, seven to ten seconds ago. Like, a while ago. One talk. Oh, nice shot. Oh, nice shot. That was a good time to flash. You had it out, just do it. Uh, ranked anxiety. Being indecisive about the things you want to do. Like, just do it. A lot of the times, in terms of ranked anxiety, is just like, go with your gut feeling. It's a lot of the times better just to commit with what you or were already planning to do, rather than try to like, read into other people. Literally, I wanted to flash, I'm going to flash. And swing off of it. Like the utility is already out, so you clearly knew you want to do it, but I feel like the hesitation is kind of stopping you. I don't really like taking that. Yeah, yeah. I don't really like taking this wide angle. I definitely think it's better to tuck in closer. Um, 
There are exceptions if you're jet with a sheriff or you're just chamber with your headhunter. This is okay. But like, it doesn't really make sense as Sky to do this. Like, you don't get any benefit from crossing to the left. Dogging is farther. You would want to get close to this angle to dog or eat, like, worst case scenario, this angle because um, it's closer to the main. Walking this way literally just puts you susceptible to dying right here to the jet. You did make noise here, B. So likely there's not someone rotated. And you guys should probably just be hitting A real quick now. You should get ready to dog right when you get to this box. Uh, not that box. I think the first box was fine. One top, top, top. Nice. One now ran out of CT smoke. Nice. Alright, that's a good. Plant, got the plant down. There's no gun though. I wish it. Oh, you have flash in three, so you're playing off flash right now. You're just waiting the timeout. Okay, no, 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 nope. Now you just have your flash out. Ooh. Reload, flash out. I, I think you should just pop it early, like right around the corner. Nice, okay. I think it too think it too hard. Like there's no need for that. Like this this flash is well a fake flash so you can swing. It it's so late. Like by the time you swing, because remember this is a mortal rank, right? You throw this flash out. Alright, they're looking away. At this point, they're not looking away anymore. It's like it's so it's too long. Yeah, the same thing. I I don't like that swing. You have absolutely no benefit in taking that. Yeah, but you have a ton of benefit to close the distance. Okay. With a wall up. Oh, he took it out. Oh. I think you drop Jenny here. And then dog. Okay, you don't need a dog anymore. It's a 4v2. Nice. Okay. I think it's always worth to make some sort of level of noise on the other side of the map. You really want to, this jet is vulnerable there. Yep, good flash. You want to take the space behind it. Good, they could be posted. All right, you guys made a lot of noise toward dish. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a rotate here. Like someone's already on site. You should dog out. Nice. Nice, site's clear. Care flank. Oh, you, oh never mind, you guys have trip. One flank dish. Okay, you want to just wait for your flash here? Nice. That's huge. You can f uh, okay. No, you have to fight this guy. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so there is just a lot of good at keeping track of abilities. A lot of people would, after getting the first like few shots, you see she's just stalling. Stalling for the timer to go down and then flashing. That's a full flash right there. That chamber is tucked. But then after losing, yeah, so I would have said back up to site if you had more players alive, but it started trading out pretty like evenly on site. So that means you needed to win your fight with the chamber. You can't let them live. Nice. Ooh, nice shot. She. I really think you should be using a flush. This is just like, there's no reason. You know that there's going to be a chamber op that you could possibly need to go against. Just using the flash to clear this dish area. The thing is, once you basically know where the chamber is, you can avoid it without losing a pick. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he's in the smoke. Oh, that's unlucky. This jet smoke is weird. I missed. Oh, don't go back. Don't go back. You have I'm Spike. Blank, blank. Yeah. Wall dropping in three seconds. Dropping now. One flank already. Oh. Oh. Nice. Main. Oh. You gotta want to get out. Yep. <laughs> 
Oh, that was a little too early. So this breach is gonna ult. Yep. I'm getting hit. That's okay. I think you still have a solid chance of winning this fight. I'm. I see God. I see God. That's <laughs> off. Oh. Nice try. Raises here. Oh, there's three here. Yep. Oh, Ooh. I got marshaled. You need to flash again, but you also need to stay alive. Yeah, this is good. I think it's behind the box. Behind the boxes. Nice job. See, that's good. I would just want to point this out because too many people want to fight immediately. That's a good flash. I guarantee that Raze is like 100% blind. And here, if you look at where the teammate's position is and where she is, the fight is not the important part. You just want to make sure she's not pushing you. And then the longer you wait, the better it gets for you because the look at the, what's happening as time progresses. Jet is coming to help you out. And then now at this point, it's pretty much like you're going to kill this race for free. There's nothing this race can really do. But if like imagine had she committed to the fight, like let's imagine the opposite scenario. You commit to the fight here, right? You continue swinging wider. You die to this raise right now. Then she comes, pick us, picks up your gun, and now it becomes awkward. But because you stay alive, you keep this pinch on this raise that is stuck arcade. Yeah. Nice. Good flash. I get that this flash flashed somebody. But you like if you don't see them, then you you continue moving to a better location. Uh, you're just standing in the open. I think it was just a minor miscorrection because I think I think she meant to step a little bit more so that the box held her spawn. So what I mean by this is pay attention to how this box is going to be her cover. Like you see how it is cover, but she wasn't fully tucked. If a little bit more to the right, you only need to focus on canteen. I think you're a little too focused on the fact that someone could be close. Like realistically, if you think about it, your teammates are up B main. Where could this guy be hiding? Pretty much nowhere. There, yeah, there's like nowhere on site that he could be hiding. All right, please don't cross to the left. Please. Oh my, it's so lucky. That's so lucky. Stop crossing to the left. If you have an op, I get it. You want to fight the op. Okay, fine. You know what? That makes sense. You don't have an op. Oh, oh, op differ. Op differ. Pop it. Yep. Fast, good. You kind of want to flash behind the squids. So like you see, like you you pop the ult. You're not gonna be the first one in, no matter what. You po have your flash out here, and then you flash around this corner. So this almost a lot of times guarantees that this squid or cabbage, whatever you guys want to call sky ult, connects, or that guy on site is full blind because they're probably shooting the cabbage or squid, and therefore they're gonna be blind. It might be worth to fight this, yeah. Okay, maybe not like that. Ah, it works, we'll take it. Yeah, the reason why I'm saying even though with Spike, it, it might be worth to fight this is because it's a 3v5. The idea that you can win a 3v5, even if you, let's say, get onto site safely is, is optimistic, let's say. So uh, in times like this, you kind of throw the fact that you have the spike into the wind and just say the point is to equalize first. And look what happens. She decides to equalize first, flashes, looks for a kill, Gets the kill. Someone on site gets the kill. Now it's a 3v3. And this is actually very winnable. Uh, Alright, someone needs to get off site. No, this is not it. This I'm telling you, this is not it. This is a really... Because this forces you guys to stay on site. This plant forces you to stay on site. And if we look at the enemy. Oh, look. There's a breach hole. You guys have to stay on site to defend the spike. And you're, that means you're guaranteed to be need to be breach ulted. I always recommend, when you're planting, take a look at the oats before you do. There's a lot of reasons that you want to take a look at it. Let's say breach all is a very common one. Raise all is another one. Like these things are really good for retake. So in that case, you want to make sure you're planting open. Maybe plant for A main. You tell your Viper go A main. I'm planting for A main. Something like that. But now we'll see how it goes. This is going to be a hard retake. So Viper does end up going A main. The wall is up. Yeah, so this is this is going to be a little... All right, here's the ult. You don't got you guys don't get caught, which is really good. Viper catches one. Okay, now this is this is a pretty much a one round. Okay, we don't talk about nice shop. Okay, that was a really nice round. I would just recommend that it's happened because the kills win you in your favor, not because 
but like kills in gunplay a lot of times it's 50 50 it just depends who hits their shot right so there you could have planned for a main you can stay toward you could then do your play as well and then that would have been much safer now you have a plan b let's say your dish player dies um then you guys both stay a main you expand the spike you guys still have a solid chance of winning even with the fact that the breach all is uh, included and that concludes this vod if you have any questions or you want to watch some high elo gameplay check out my twitch stream and if you want some personalized coaching then the link for that is also in the description on top of that if you have any vods that you want to send for me to review there's a google form down there as well where you can send me your vods and you might end up in the next youtube video thank you so much for watching and as always peace out